Welcome back to another episode of the AI Timeline. We don't really have any crazy big news this week, but we do have a lot of cool new research. Like this one you are seeing right now is an augmented reality combined with a language model called Otter, which you can chat with to get assistance for real life situations. And imagine it combining with the Apple Vision Pro. This might just be the future of Siri. This other video shows that this person is playing Mahjong with the help of Otter. And this may be as well cheating, right? Having an AI assisting your plays. Music Gen published by Meta is a text to music model that is insanely good at generating music. Let's just listen to one result. It's just basically music LM, but much better. And I'll be making a separate in-depth video about it, so subscribe to stay tuned. At this point, some people are saying that the real open AI is meta because the amount of work that meta has contributed to the world by open sourcing AI research is just immense. Llama, PyTorch, Segment Anything, Detectron, etc. are all published freely by meta for everyone. While people be flaming how metaverse is a failure and such, I think all the money that went in there is actually being spent on AI research and they are open sourcing them which improve our world by a lot so shout out to zuck meanwhile google is not open sourcing any ai research at all and for the imagine editor they claimed note that due to concerns in relation to responsible ai we are not releasing imagine editor to the public yeah whatever we were already able to do this in open source six months ago it's pretty far from the state of the art too nvidia's newest research atd 3d has improved text to 3d generation from taking up to 15 minutes down to only only two seconds. That is mental. Functions like morphing between 3D objects is possible too. Tracking everything everywhere all at once. A great movie reference and probably one of the holy grails for video editing. If this research actually generalizes well, this could be editor's lifesaver and a game changer for any professional video production too. They have this interactive demo on their official page so you can try it if you want. A new type of large language model vulnerability was pointed out, where it relies on them to hallucinate a library that does not exist, recommend it to people to import it, attackers then find these hallucinated imports, create them, make them have malicious payloads, and people that imports those hallucinated libraries would automatically add malware to their own machines. This really does sound like some sort of sci-fi cyber attack that only happens in movies. A new research called mind to web where it is a generalist agent for the web that can follow language instructions to complete complex tasks on any website. Book flights, make appointments, find the lowest price, any tasks you name it, I really think CAPTCHA in the future will get weirder and weirder thanks to these language models. But can language models infer causation from correlation? Well, the answer is no. This research shows that LM's causal inference skills are almost close to randomly guessing, so yeah, they are pretty bad at it. Even if you fine tune it, it'll still fail to generalize. On the other hand, OpenAI and DeepMind will open up their source codes and models to the UK government, probably for AI safety reasons. While that's neat, OpenAI, Google, and Anthropic ban the use of the generated output content from their AI models to train other models. Some people quote that they have no mode, but the main question is will terms of service stand in court? Because Google has used OpenAI's generated content too. Is OpenAI going to sue Google? Talking about mode, this new model called EnterLM is catching up to GPT-4's performance. That's kind of nuts. Faster VIT, a new vision transformer architecture was published by Nvidia Labs, and it looks extremely promising and has the highest score for speed and accuracy trade-off compared to previous previous top performers. Why AI will save the world. It's a blog written by Mark Andreessen that blew up last week, you can give it a read if you want. Matting anything is a research that removes background for any image, and this research is still using SAM. Imagine how much this can improve if SAMHQ is used instead, which is the research I mentioned in a previous AI news episode. <coughs> Free PhD paper? <coughs> <clears throat> yeah. Anyways, someone even put in on a very chaotic video and made a matting anything video. Photoshop fail went much more viral than where I thought it would. Maybe because the results are a lot more real, especially when you compare it to Stability's clip drop and crop function, which was released this week. Clip drop is an official free alternative from Dream Studio made by Stability AI and can do uncrop similar to generative fill in Photoshop. See here, the generated parts are kind of blurry from clip drop, and Photoshop looks way more sharper and natural. Maybe Firefly. 
playing on realistic and high resolution stock images have its upsides. On the topic of Firefly, Adobe is so confident its Firefly generative AI won't breach any copyright law that they will cover your legal bills if you ever get in trouble using it. This result from Runway Gen 1 went kind of viral too. It's a video style transfer, but it just looks very satisfying. For more context, Runway Gen 1 is a style transfer model, meaning that you need a video as a reference and Runway Gen 2 is a pure text-to-video synthesis model. And that's the one where you don't need any reference video at all. ChatGPT is fun, but not funny. This research showed that 90% of the ChatGPT generated jokes were the same 25 jokes. They said that ChatGPT is also overfitted to a particular joke structure, which makes them extra boring and predictable. This may also hint about its creative capacity too. Like I always find the titles that ChatGPT generated or suggested are pretty garbage. On the other hand, ChatGPT on iOS now supports Siri and shortcuts, which is pretty neat. Nearly 7,000 subreddits went dark in order to protest Reddit CEO's crappy decision to make it profitable for a suspected IPO. It's crap because they are going to charge Reddit's API, which will pretty much destroy a lot of third-party apps surrounding Reddit. For instance, the polished version of Reddit called Apollo that has a better UI for phone users will be forced to close down, or else it'll force them to spend $20 million a year just for the API requests. Most of the AI-related subreddits are down too, including my favorites r slash stable diffusion and r slash chatgpt. Japan's mountain rescue team only spent 20 seconds to locate a missing person while their smartphone was completely out of range. I initially thought it was about AI, so I covered it, but it turns out that it was a new SoftBank drone that was relaying the GPS signal from the satellite, then locating the smartphone that is out of range. It's still pretty sick though. Temporonet 2.0 was released, and now it also takes in the optical flow map from the previous frame too. All these results you are seeing right now are not processed with Epsins, by the way. And in the meantime, here are some more image to image video results. This one is made by Tokyo Jab. He is only active on Instagram and Reddit, and since his usual habitat, r slash stable diffusion, is down right now, all his workflows are locked behind the bars, so rip. There are other pretty impressive ones too, like this one that turned a middle aged man dancing into cute girls. The future of AI influencers is really closing in on us. Let's end this with more QR code anime girls, which is the QR code control net that I mentioned in last week's episode. And it works, which is pretty cool. Like and subscribe so I can know if you really dig this episode of AI news. Follow my Twitter if you haven't, and I'll see y'all in the next one.